proving once again she has nothing between her ears. Kamala Harris did this interview with Brett Baer earlier tonight. Uh, Folks, there's nothing here. Now, I was listening to a piece of music, had the closed caption on, didn't want to miss anything with this exciting, exclusive Fox News interview. Brett Baer and Kamala Harris. What she's going to do for America. So welcome back to the Channel Culture Confederacy here. It's Wednesday night. So happy Wednesday, everybody. If you're new to the channel, no fancy graphics, epic soundtracks, pretty boy camera angles. It's you, me, my smartphone, the news of the day, and this mission, this crusade to preserve great art, music, history, and culture. So this is over at NJ.com, New Jersey. And here are the reactions from people like Adam Kingzinger. Who else do we have in the mix here? The Lincoln Project. So I'm going to read you these responses, and they are so funny. Oh, this is a real scrape. Let me take a sip of my coffee here. I mean, I, I, brace yourselves. Get yourself a cup of coffee. Get yourself a snack. Might be a long one tonight. Strap yourself in. But it says here, Vice President and Democratic Presidential Nominee Carola... Can I talk? Kamala Harris. She should change her name to Carola Harris. There you go. Carola Harris, no, Kamala Harris sat for an interview with Fox News anchor Brett Baer. Hey, at least then she'd be down with the women vote, right? She connect with the people. On Wednesday night, and skewered Republican nominee and former President Donald Trump on several occasions. And here's the reaction from people like Adam Kingsinger. Remember Adam Kingsinger? Former Republican congressman on the January 6th committee. Quote, she went into the lion's den and took them on and stood tall. Fox tried to BS gotchas in their right-wing reality, and she turned everything defty back to Trump and held him accountable in his own safe space. Like you weren't in your own safe space during the January 6th committee, Adam Kingsinger, going on the shows like Meet the Press and MSNBC, Rachel Maddow, I mean Rachel Maddox. But she did not let them bait her at all. No, no, no. Strong, confident, epic. She totally schooled Brett Bear. Looked more like Brett Bear schooled her. Because at one point she got angry and frustrated. She couldn't answer the questions. And notice whenever she answers a question, it's this long diatribe. Typical politician. Let me be clear. What we have to do is what we've done in the past with our party. And the Biden administration has been strong. Strong on immigration, on foreign policy. Uh Uh-huh. Well, I got a car, a bridge, and land in Arizona to sell you. But in the most controversial part of the interview, Bear played a clip of Trump insisting that liberals were the enemy because he had been investigated, quote, more than Al Capone. Seems like it, doesn't it? So this is what Harris had to say to this. With all due respect, Brett, that clip was not what he has been saying about the enemy within. It is repeated that when he's speaking about the American people. No, I need to do this in her voice, okay? Uh, Brett, no, with all due respect, that clip was... That's not what he's been saying about the enemy within. Let me make this clear. He's speaking about the American people. That's not what you just showed. <laughs> You're not playing fair, Brett Bear. Uh, I've gone back and I checked this. Trump did not say he's going to lock up his enemies. He said he would call in the National Guard if things are out of hand because I'm sure he doesn't want another January 6th. That's what he said. But you think this dope will go back and read the interview or the, the transcript of the interview at least? No. She's too busy fighting for transgender rights. Paying for all those transgender uh, surgeries in California. So the reaction, let me read you a little more of this reaction. It continues. You didn't show me that, she said. No, let me do it in her voice. You didn't show me that, Brad. You and I both know that he has talked about turning the American military on the American people. He has talked about locking people up because they disagree with him. This is a democracy. Well, this is actually a federal republic. Confederation of States, Kamala Harris. If you don't know that, you shouldn't be president of the United States. 
the president of the United States should be willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. Again, Trump never said that. Who went after Trump? You guys did. And I'm an independent voter. So then Senator Claire McCaskill chimes in, quote, if anyone is trying to figure out who is stronger, Kamala is going on Fox News, and even the MAGA folks know he would never, ever be brave enough to do an interview on MSNBC. Really? So it just amazes me. Now, here's a reaction from, they say here, from Dana Perino, admitting that Harris was fairly effective. Now, Let's be honest, the presidency has become nothing more than a popularity contest. It has nothing to do with foreign policy or trans, uh, transgender rights, LBGTQ rights, what are you going to call it? it? has nothing to do with that. It comes down to three things. Do they look good on camera? Would you sleep with them? And are they hot as hell? That's all it is. It's a popularity contest. That's what the presidency has become. And maybe it's time, as I've said before many times on the channel, maybe it's time we rethink this thing called the presidency if it's going to cause this much division. But no, 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 we don't want to do that, you see, because we've got to play this game because we're Republican, we're Democrat. we got to rule the roost here. So then author David Rothkopf, whatever his name is, he chimed in time after time after time. Kamala Harris has been tested and triumphed with flying colors. She is a much stronger candidate today than when her campaign started, which was like, what, a month ago? And he added, quote, Fox prepared a warm bath for Trump and an ambush for the VP. Now, I think, honestly, that Brett Baer was pretty fair in asking these questions about uh, immigration or what have you. And it's funny how she got all antsy about that. It's like you've been the VP for the past four years. Aren't you in charge of border security? Then get off your fat ass and do something about it, Kamala Harris. She emerged stronger while both Trump and Fox revealed their profound weakness. Well, I think it's pretty weak when you can't answer a straight question. You see, if I were running for president, I'd tell you hell like it is. See, I wouldn't be afraid to uh, say things like they need to be said. I'd be up there and be like with Brett Baer, you know, Brett Baer, this whole thing is crap. It's all crap. It's all bull crap. Everybody knows it. January 6th is bull crap. It was all bull crap. So somebody on X, James Fallow, wondered how Trump would uh, would fare in a similar situation. When watching Kamala Harris with Brett Baer on Fox just now, imagine for a second Donald Trump trying to answer questions for half an hour from Rachel Maddow on, or, or Lawrence O'Donnell. Like I said, I'm I'm doing I'm doing this cold. Okay, so can't even read tonight. But you get the drift here. So on and on it goes in this article here, nj.com, thought I'd share this with you. So all these reactions to this Brett Baer, Kamala Harris interview, and folks, there was nothing there, nothing we haven't seen before. She can't answer a straight question, and I have a hunch at the very last minute, the Democrats are going to try to ditch her ass. That's what I'm thinking. And they picked the wrong time, I think, to do this interview. During this, during the dinner hour, well, maybe you can catch people home during the dinner hour, okay. But I think maybe something in prime time would have been better, maybe like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. But man, oh man, it's just funny to see reactions from people like Adam Kingsinger, who's got at this point zero credibility. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. You can follow me at Instagram, hashtag Jason Composes, because I write music in my spare time, or go to X, Culture Confederacy, at Culture Confed 1 on X. Now you can find me at Substack. This is the Culture Confederacy saying peace out. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this thing called the United States. I'll catch you next time, and y'all have a great Wednesday night. Take care.